Hello, welcome to today's video. Thank you for clicking. Today we're gonna to be talking about two measurements of variability that you can use for one quantitative variable. So we'll be talking about standard deviation and variance. And those two are really intertwined because variance is used to get to the standard deviation calculation. So we're going to be building off of that deviation measurement that we talked about in a previous video. So if you haven't checked that out yet, I would suggest going back, watching the deviation video, and then coming into this one to be able to see it used. So variance and standard deviation, those are the two measurements we're talking about today. And specifically, I wanna note that these measurements that we're talking about today are for samples. So the formula that I show you is for a sample, it's not for a population. When we talked about means, we had X bar, and that formula actually can also be used for mu, which is the population mean. That is not the same case here. So variance and standard deviation has a unique formula for a sample versus a population. So what we're looking at today is specifically for a sample. So a variance, notation-wise, has the notation S squared. That's the notation for variance. And the formula for that is going to take the sum of all of the deviations, and if you remember, that's this formula right here, so the sum of all of those deviations, but you're gonna square those, and then you would divide by n minus one. So just some reminders of what these measurements are. n is going to be what we refer to as the sample size, and n is just the notation we use for sample size. Also remember that X bar is the notation for the sample mean. And then we have X sub i, and that's just a fancy way of saying each observation. And then this sigma, remember that that's going to be summing. So that sums everything behind it. So we'll sum all of the deviations. And then this S squared, is what we call sample variance. And then that's the first part, so that's the variance part. But to get to standard deviation, all you actually have to do is to take the square root. So S is standard deviation for the sample. That would be just taking S squared and taking the square root. So that's going to be our sample standard deviation. So what we're going to be doing today is calculating the variance first, and then we'll be taking the square root of that to find the sample standard deviation. And when you take the square root of that, that helps you to be able to actually use the same units that your quantitative variable is being measured in. So if you kept it in the variance form, if you were measuring something like height, then your units for variance would be inches squared. And if you took the square root, then you can talk about it in inches. So it's valuable to get it down to just standard deviation because it's easier to talk about um, those in that unit for, form. So on the next slide, we're gonna be talking about how to actually calculate this. So we still have that same data that we've been looking at in past videos, looking at the number of Twitter posts. So to calculate standard deviation, in a past video, we did X bar. In a video past as well, we did deviation. So I'm just gonna remind you of those measurements. So we had X bar, and that was 6.71 for this data set. And then we calculated a bunch of deviations. And remember that that's each observation minus the mean. So we had all of these measurements, which I'll write out real quickly. So we already calculated those in a past video. This is the mean, and then these are each of the deviations. And we talked about in a past video how the problem with that, those deviation measurements, is that if you were to add them all up, they add to zero. And that should make sense based on how the mean is being calculated. So because deviation gives both direction and distance, it's going to do that. What we are about to do is get rid of the direction. So we are going to square each of these measurements as you saw in that formula on the last slide. Here, when we square it, we're going to be getting rid of those directional components of it. So I'm just gonna quickly write that out and then give you the results of that and we'll move on. Okay, so we've got our squared deviations. That helps us to get rid of the direction so they won't cancel each other out. Now we're close to being able to calculate the variance. So remember that variance is going to be S squared. 
And what it does is it sums all of the observations, all of those deviances. So we have 2.92 plus 0 0.08 plus 32.6 plus 7.34, 10.82. I'm going to get fancy and go above so you can all see it. And 1.66. And we divide that by n, which is the number of observations. And here, if you remember, our n is 7. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 observations. So we have 7 minus 1. Now, if I were to sum that numerator, if you don't believe me, you can calculate that yourself, but that comes out to be 83.4, and we're dividing by 6. So the variance comes out to be 13.9. So pretty easy to calculate by hand. It's probably not necessary for you all to learn how to calculate it by hand, but I think it helps you to understand what the formula is actually doing. It's calculating the distance that values fall from the mean but we square it to get rid of those directions. So we can just have the distance that they fall or how do they, how do they fall about the mean. And then if we want to get S, which remember is going to be standard deviation, we'll just take that S squared and take the square root of it. So if you took the square root of 13.9, you would see S being equal to about 3.7 Three. Now, in future videos, I'll show you how to do this in both a calculator and also in a computing package. But for right now, that is the formula. That's how it works. That's the idea behind it. We're trying to figure out how those values center themselves or are, um, how they fall around the mean. And that's what variance and standard deviation do. So I'll see you in future videos.